Good morning. So, three reasons why you are not getting the results that you want. If you're coming in, give me a hello. If you're on replay, drop a replay below. Just on a walk at the moment, going a lot slower than I would normally go because I've got horrendous blisters and need to change my um, trainers, boots, which is a bit frustrating. And it's a bit like a conversation I had with somebody the other day and they were like, you know, I used to be doing this. I used to do all of these sessions and now I can't do as much as I want, but I want to do more. I could do more. And the reality is you have to just do what you can and focus on this and actually control what you can with this. You're going to go through periods where you can do more, periods where you can do less. And actually that's life. You're not always, you can't always compare yourself. They're almost comparing themselves to, to lockdown level. And by default on this, they were then getting frustrated and thinking, what's the point in doing this? Yet I reminded them that to maintain your results, you have to actually do a lot less than you did to get them. To maintain your results, you can get away with doing a lot less than what you did to get there, which is quite exciting. If you're ever in a position where you're like, this is hard, this is hard what I'm doing. But actually, once you get there, don't give up, Don't, but also don't think you have to keep that up or do nothing. Because if you just go from 10 out of 10 to seven out of 10, you might just keep those results. Anyway, that wasn't actually anything to do with today's topic, but I hope you found that helpful. Um, anyway, on to today's topic. Two things that might be holding you back, and, and I probably know this more than ever, because having kids, hey Sarah, hey Vanessa, having kids, the kids' meals, the picking, the bites, the licks, the tastes, they, they definitely creep up unless you're aware of them. And when I speak to people who are really frustrated with like weight loss, fat loss, and like, I'm, I'm eating this, I'm literally, I have like this, this nice healthy granola for breakfast, uh, salad for lunch or protein shake for lunch and a light dinner. They're, it's frustrating because like, I don't know what's going on. Then we look into it and there's the licks, the taste, the bites. I want you to look at all of these things and unfortunately they add up. You know, for me, I'm making the kids some yogurt. Oh, I'll lick the spoon. I like to eat that from time to time. Guilty. Blueberries in the yogurt. A few blueberries for me. Pick one, eat one. That's soon, isn't it? Pick your own strawberries. Looking forward to that. Hey, Beverly. Um, and these add up. And not that they're necessarily bad. You've got to put something in the tank. And if it's, it's good food, it's probably going to reduce your intake of something else. But then if, you're, if your meals are then set and everything else is set in there, and we're not considering these things. It's not that they're bad, that it's but. We just need to consider that as data. Okay, when I have X, Y, and Z, what does my weight do? What does my body shape do? What does my waistline do? What does my hip do? So we can now see your results, even with the licks, the taste, the bites, because these add up. And I can tell you now that sometimes when I haven't planned my meals, you know, planning your meals is, is, takes a lot of time. It's quite a nuisance, I'll be honest. I don't always do it. When I do it, it saves me time. Yeah, I still convince myself that it takes lots of time. Anyone else do that? Because <laughs> then I'm finding myself just, we have a picky dinner from time to time, which is fine. But often by the time we've had that, I'm starving hungry and I end up eating more. We've got picky bits everywhere. And it's like, where do we stop? What do we have? A bit of that, bit of that, bit of that. And we know from research that if you look at research on buffets, hey Mary, when you walk around the buffet prior to choosing your food, you're more likely to make better choices and eat less than if you just go around and start adding stuff to your plate without looking around it. In fact, that happened to me last weekend. We went to London. If you've been to Sloan Square, definitely recommend that. We kind of got lost on walking around. And when you're with two toddlers, five and three, you've got a window of opportunity when you're lost walking before it gets a bit, a bit crazy and a bit, oh, I can't, walk anymore um so we came across though this little market on saturday morning with food after food tent and it was like heaven paella spanish like really nice vegan looking salads and foods caribbean brazilian um indian it was literally every peru one um yeah literally every type of food you could imagine um Hey Joss, hey Mary. And uh, it was like, oh my God, I'm so hungry there. Let's just, I'm just gonna get that one. That one looks good. 
So I got that one. It was actually a vegan one. Didn't realise it was vegan until I actually bought it. But it's actually really nice. And my point there is, as I kept walking around, I was like, oh, I now want a bit of that and a bit of that. Wish I waited a little bit. And it's similar to that when we pick and when we snack and there's bites taste. And that's what ends up happening with that. So I just wanted to bring your attention to those bites, tastes, licks. I'm about to do signal unless I turn around. There we go. So um, that's number one. Can you track your bites, licks and tastes today? That's, that's my challenge for you. At least you write it down every time you go for a bite, lick and a taste and see if that gives you an insight into maybe, you know, the odd few nuts, snacking. Yeah, especially the licks and tastes and the bites, which aren't even like planned. They're just subconscious and you might need a, a little reminder to write these down. So that's number one. Number two is that we think that we can out exercise the diet. Now, exercise is amazing. It does burn calories. Number one. Number two. Uh, uh, number two, it will help change your body shape, which then can then take the pressure off the scale. It obviously helps with posture, bone density and, and risk of disease independent of weight loss. Your metabolic health, hey, metabolic health. Hey, Cheryl, all of these things. So the benefits are independent of weight loss. But when we think that we can train really hard to counteract the nutrition, that's when it can become quite frustrating with weight loss, not to mention the fact that there's that muscle equation in there as well where if we're doing some more resistance work if you're not taking the right measures you, you could quite easily gain a pound of muscle over time and lose a pound of fat over time and your weight stays the same and you think it's pointless you end up giving up which is also quite frustrating because then we give up and like i said at the start we think there's no point and then here's a challenge for you if you get into that state give up give yourself four weeks then take measurements and see what happens then because sometimes we just need to see, okay, was it doing anything? How do you feel? What's your energy levels? Don't just track your weight. Track your energy levels, how you feel. Because your energy levels, how you feel, can also correlate with your happiness. With how you are around people, the opportunities you take, the things you say yes to. All of these things which pretty much are also why we want to lose weight when we go into the why. When we speak to people and say, you know, why do you actually want to do this? What's the point of losing weight, getting fit, toning up? I want to do it because of this. I want to get up and down off the floor. I want to live longer, see the grandkids do X, Y, and Z. All of these things that we say are important, but then we almost say no to these things all of a sudden because of a number on the scale. It reminds me, always act like your kids are watching. Yeah, interesting. Anyway, anyway, so number one was the licks to taste the bites. Can you track them today? Be, be curious with them. Number two, remember you can't really out-exercise the diet. And I'm gonna bring this up because for example, I often, often, when I do something like this, I'm training for a long walk and weighted walk, I often actually gain a bit of weight because it almost makes me more hungry than the calories that I burn. And I almost feel like I need to be more fueled for the exercise. Now, I know from research that there's some evidence and it's quite contradictory, but I'm quite out there and very individual to be fair, not really contradictory, more individual. Some people find that you know, going for a walk will actually reduce their hunger. Some people say going for a run will increase it. But what we know is if you, if we really go in hard and you perceive it as hard, regardless of the calories you burn, you'll perceive it as higher, more calories burnt than it actually is. And the thing with that is, is then we're more likely to overcompensate. So for example, if you're a bit achy from a workout a few days ago, you might go, oh, you know, I worked hard there, so I can have that. But that could have no difference to the calorie equation, whether you've got DOMS or not, because you still broke down the muscle, it just might not be displayed, and you might just be feeling it in the same way as before. And although, yes, there might be a, a little bit of difference, like you might be burning a few more calories, not to the extent where it warrants an extra meal or snack. Though. And I'm sharing this because often it's these little things that if we can be more aware of, I'm not saying change them today. I'm just saying being more aware of these things that can help a lot. But at the same time, exercise does work the opposite way. We know that if someone's snacking in the evening a lot or 
and now works out in the evening, that almost just occupies people. And now they're working out, they've burnt two, 300 calories, and they've now not eaten two, 300 calories. And they're like, I actually don't feel as hungry. Maybe I was just looking for a dopamine hit. Maybe I was nearly on my bum there. Maybe I was just looking for a dopamine hit, and I got that from the exercise. Again, interesting observation. Didn't have to change anything to their diet. The exercise has done the trick with their mindset. However, just to give you an insight, if you look at like some of the boxers, um, MMA fighters, now I'm not, I'm not criticizing them because I wouldn't want them getting hold of this. I'd be after, they'd be after me. But from a body shape point of view, they train literally all day in most days so hard, yet they haven't got the best physiques. Like some of them, you might see some of the boxers, like, like, and it's because it's not their goal to have the best physique, yet they train literally hours every day, like, on off all day, really. Um, yeah, they have rest day, but even their rest day, I bet they do, do quite a lot. Now, just given that, given that, it's a good example of where, why can we expect to do the same? Ah, oh, you know, I can just eat what I want now because I've done an exercise session. Now, that's not to say that exercise doesn't do anything. It does put a dent in it with the calorie equation. But I want you to see the exercise is almost like the multiplier, the change in the body shape, the metabolic disease, the bone health, the mobility, moving, making everyday tasks easier, getting stronger, that sense of achievement, the mindset focus when you lift something a bit heavier, when you go a bit harder, that pushes you in a different way as well, which then translates to other areas potentially. So at the same time, I'm going to very balanced here. I go up and one, then I give the other. If you're training loads at the moment, but you're like, I have no time to plan my meals, no other time. I'm about to do signal, so I'm going to walk up the hill again. We might need to go. We might need to say, you know what, let's not train today. And instead, I'm going to plan, take this half an hour out to plan my meals so that I can get a handle on these bites, tastes, licks. And all of a sudden then, we feel a bit more in control. All of a sudden then, we've delegated those choices, those tricky choices. When we're busy, when we're tired, we've made them already. And when we're tired and stressed, we're more likely to make poorer decisions. We're more likely to perceive foods as more rewarding than they actually are. So I hope that helps. I have put together a four part mini course, if you like, on helping to overcome comfort eating and self-sabotage within this. If you want that, just comment below or we'll click something around this and I can send it over to you. Just comment below um, and I'll send that over to you. Just comment with comfort eating so I know what that is and I will get that over to you. Anyway, any questions on this, let me know. If you found it helpful, let me know. Like, share it. If you found it helpful, you know somebody who might find this helpful because... I'm just sharing stuff that we hear day in, day out. And one of the themes of this week has definitely been that you're probably not going to have to train as hard as you think you will have to, to get the results you want, but you will have to probably be more consistent than you ever thought you would to get the results you want. Anyway, have an awesome day and I'll see you later. I'm going to keep walking on and hopefully these boots will wear in. I'll see you later. Take care.